Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Jack Devine. Welcome back to another episode of Jack Snacks. Today we're going to snack on this beautiful little Mixolydian hack that I teach to my beginner students and I thought I would share it with everybody out there in YouTube land. All right, so yeah, Grateful Dead music definitely utilizes some Mixolydian from time to time. Um, so we're going to need to have access to this sound and it can be somewhat uh, difficult for younger or less experienced players to to figure out how to do it. And so I came up with a goofball joke system that will hopefully help you guys, you know, crack the code a little bit. So if you're if you're an advanced player, you know, obviously this isn't really geared towards you, so don't judge me too harshly for simplifying this topic, but um I jokingly came up with the term the New York shape which means we start with the middle finger, okay? And we're gonna start by playing this two, one, four arpeggio shape. So the New York shape is the second finger, then the index finger. All right, the backwards New York shape would be like that. So we're going from the one, the three, and the five of a D chord right there. So I'm going to kind of set up a, a D jam here over this, you know, D seven sound. This. one chord D7 vamp. Okay, so you could do that for yourself. Uh, I'm kind of choosing something similar to the connective tissue between uh, China Cat Sunflower and I Know Your Rider, that kind of middle, middle jam there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these notes, the one, three, and five of our D chord. And what we're going to do is we're going to say D, F sharp, and A also appear here here again okay we also have it here okay now the New York shape quote-unquote is not a real concept everybody this is just a way to remember this shape all right it's just a euphemism a goofball euphemism that I've concocted to you know get stuck in everybody's brain because everybody occasionally makes fun of New Yorkers for being rude and over utilizing the one finger wave <laughs> But what this does do is it plants firmly in our brain the notion of playing these one, three, five structures. All right, and we're gonna focus on this, you know, 10th fret all the way up to the 15th fret, um, or I guess 14th fret. Okay. And we're gonna utilize that as our structure. Okay, and we're gonna start to hang other one, uh, other New York shapes within that. Okay, so first things first, let's target our Ds, D with the middle finger. D with the middle finger, D with the middle finger. Get that. Now go. Same intervals, same spacing, same everything. Backwards. Okay, here's what that sounds like over top of my D groove. some measure of fluidity, you know, coming up and down this little highway, okay? All we're really doing is playing the same three notes in three different octaves, okay? Here's where things start to get interesting. The Mixolydian sound is comprised of combining the D triad and the C triad, okay? Like that, okay? Now, I don't want to go like this so much. Although that doesn't sound, that's not an unmusical sound, if that's such a term, but okay, but what I do want to do is point that out to you. What we're going to be doing now is taking this C triad, which is another 214 or New York shape. Okay, so that's the C. Okay, but let's put it up an octave, just like we did the D. And now, all within the same uh, four, not, four fret 
range, we actually have access to both triads that we're interested in exploiting, right? The sound of the D triad, and immediately below it on the D string is the octave of the C triad. And now this starts to sound like this. shape or New York shape and then we're going to come up and grab the C okay and occasionally what I'll do is I'll do this and that note the B is part of our mixolydian scale it so turns out so it sounds very nice and inside although we can do chromatic approach tones from outside of the scale non-diatonic approach tones are just fine too depending on how you incorporate them so now we have a D going backwards New York shape into a C backwards New York, right? So now we can mix them. Okay, and we can use little approach tones like that, right? what that does okay well now we're going to take a look at one of the one of the inconsistency of the of the guitar okay is that the tuning breaks the breaks character right here at the g string the interval between the g and the b is different than from the d and the g right we we tune like this Whoop, back fret well so we're going to have to deal with some tuning anomalies between the g and the b and how uh the new york shape appears on the g string is different. It's rather than being on the root and going two one four, right? Which would sound like this, all right? Which isn't what we're after in terms of a mixolydian tonality. Okay, it's more of a diminished sound. But um, what we do find is if we play that here, we get its third, the third of our D chord, the fifth, and a flat seven. So now we have. A two one four or New York shape, and the D shape, okay, the C shape, and again, this is within the D chord stemming from its third. Okay, so now we can connect the dots using that little slidey trick that I showed you here from the B to the C. We're going to do that right here from F to F sharp, and we end up with this. So that's D, New York, C, New York, slide in on the G string. And that's the D's third, fifth, and seventh shape. And that's going to sound very, very pleasing over top of our D groove. Here we go. up in there but no big deal all right so all right so the way we can connect these uh, ideas is often through this little one fret slide or two fret slide okay so now we've got start building. 
building from here. Now watch what we can do. There's our little, our little slide up, but what did we do? We did a little enclosure. Okay, so now we would go two, one, four, two, one, four, approach. That sounds pretty classy. Similarly, we can slide and then come up into another. This one isn't a 2 1 4 shape, but it's still leading with this middle finger. And we're coming up from the third into the fifth, flat seven root. And we can come up again. This is a 2 1 4, but it's a different spacing of the fingers. But this is kind of a, an addendum to the initial philosophy I'm trying to teach you here today. So we can access other, you know, arpeggio shapes as we ascend, and we can lead off of that index finger, I mean the middle finger rather, again, New York style. So let's look at on the B and G pair, or G and B pair, we would have this. So that's slide from the three to the five on the G string, flat seven to root on the B string. Pivot back to the G string at the A note at the 14th fret and slide up to the C note. Okay, that's the flat seven of our D sound. And then jump to the root and the third. So now we've got flat seven, right? So that's a, and then we can slide up just two frets. And because I don't have a 22nd fret, I can't fret that, but it would sound like this. If I had that there, I could fret that pinky, but I, instead I have to throw it up under the high uh, E string. Okay, so that's just on the G and B pair. We grab this. We can now take that 2 1 4 shape, the New York shape, and grab the 9 here. That sounds pretty slick, too. encapsulates the idea of this 2 one, uh, 4 shape, the New York shape. Alright, that's a basic idea in the hands of somebody that knows what to do with it, right? Now at first you're going to be kind of lumpy with it, but not a big deal. Okay, similarly we can start it back here, right, and bring it up if we want. stacked arpeggio, okay? Check that sound out. afraid to try to implement a system like a 214 shape across the entire neck. 
That's it for today, folks. Thanks again for tuning in to Jack Snacks. I really do appreciate you stopping by. Take care.